Hi everyone, it's Marianne. Welcome to my Wasteless Life. For today's video, I'm sharing with you my Fall 2021 plant collection. Thank you so much for joining me today and if you're new, this is my Wasteless Life where I take you along my plant and sustainable lifestyle journey and share with you some of my tips and tricks along the way. And for today's video, I am sharing with you my Fall 2021 plant collection slash updated bedroom tour which is a follow-up to my spring plant collection slash bedroom tour. So those two seems to now go hand in hand whenever I do a plant collection video. And if you haven't seen that yet, please do check it out. I'll link it up here and down description. And if you have seen it, thank you so much. But if you'd like, you can go ahead and rewatch it before watching this one so you can get a refresher and really see the differences and changes that I have made in my bedroom and with my plant collection. But of course, it's not required viewing before you can watch my fall plant collection video. But I would be referencing my spring plant collection vid just to explain to you the changes that I have made in my bedroom and with my plant collection. But for my first time viewers, just to give you a quick refresher and reference to what's going on since the early start of this year actually started when I did my fall 2020 plant collection video when I shocked even myself that I have accumulated so many plants over quarantine. I have more than doubled my plants and ended up taking care of more than 100 plants over the winter, which I wasn't exactly prepared for. But I'm actually glad I had the foresight and actually spent the time decluttering and curating my house plants. And now that winter is coming again, I'm not getting overwhelmed by taking care of way too many plants or leaving them for an extended period of time, especially now that we are heading towards the end of the pandemic and other priorities are needing our attention. I can still enjoy my plants like I did when I first started collecting plants when I only had about 50 plants, which to me back then was already way too many plants. At last Vlogmas and Plantmas, after I realized I have accumulated over 100 plants, I decided to downsize my plant collection down to under 80, which I thought was the achievable goal. 70 to 75 plants would be the most ideal and not to add more than 20 new plants into my plant collection. So let's see if I actually hit those goals and let's start with my fall plant collection. So let's start at this corner. This one is a west facing window and as you can see from the foliage it is fall and it's about four o'clock in the afternoon so the sun is directly hitting this window. But because it is fall even though the leaves are starting to get bare the sun is not as strong and during the summer and spring when the sun is stronger these trees are filtering out the light that's coming from this window so this is great for my house plants and if you've seen my spring plant tour slash updated bedroom tour video you know there's some changes that happened here as well i had a lot more plants and i also had a round side table and a chair here that i took out and just replaced it with that plant stand so let's check out the plants that i have in this corner so first, I have my Raphidophora tetrasperma, and if you've been watching me for a while, you know that this one was already growing really, really tall, but I accidentally dropped it from this exact plant stand, and all the foliage basically got cut in half. But it has since grown back its foliage, and it actually has three different growth points. And I haven't really staked it up yet. I actually just inserted this bowl right before filming this video, just to make the leaves face this way a little bit more but I haven't really properly given it a trellis or a pole to climb on which I'll probably do in the growing season but since because it is in this corner it has this wall to lean on and and I personally do not mind if the roots start to attach to the wall but ideally I would rather have it a moss pole or a trellis or a wood plank that it would attach itself instead because I do move my plants a lot and this might not be a permanent situation for it as you can see with the changing setup of my tiny bedroom and here is my thigh constellation monstera that i imported from thailand and if you watch my spring planter video and you haven't seen any video from me since and you're watching this now you might think there's nothing changed with my thigh constellation monstera but this actually has grown into a very beautiful large plant that i since cut it off and propagated it and treated that for another plant so as you can see the cut point is down here and it's already starting to have a new growth point which i'm also excited about because i am using that for a giveaway next spring thank you again for clicking on today's video i hope you're enjoying it so far but before we continue i just want to share with you my 2022 plentiful planner this is a planner that i designed myself 
that I created with Plant Parents specifically in mind so that we can be on top of our plant care as well as our productivity and wellness goals in the coming new year. And I did a video where I flipped through the contents of this planner as well as share with you the items I currently have on sale in my Etsy shop. So one of the items that I currently have on sale in my Etsy shop is this Mary Plantmas bag which I designed and created myself. This one is printed on a 100% cotton tote bag which is from Unique Glow. So this is a very quality cotton tote bag that is also sustainable. And this one you could use for your everyday holiday shopping as your everyday tote bag. Or if you'd like, you could use this as a sustainable reusable tote bag. It already comes with a gift bag for that purpose, as well as a Mary Plantmas card that is blank inside. So if you wanna use this as a holiday gift bag, it comes with everything you need to make it into one. Minus the gift, of course, unless you want to get the 2022 Plantful Planner as a gift for yourself or for a plant lover in your life. So the planner is available on Amazon, this one, and other reusable tote bags in my Etsy shop. I'll have all the links down in the description. And right now, my Etsy shop is offering free shipping until December 1st. And on top of that, I'm giving you early access to my Black Friday sale. And let's continue on with the rest of the video. And here's an air plant one of the two that i currently have and over here is my cebu blue pothos so compared to the spring plant video and as you can see not only has it grown a lot fuller but it also started to trail i actually also pruned this before i started filming so it was actually trailing a lot longer but it was already touching the carpet so i didn't want that plus i'm also thinking about next growing season to also put it in a moss bowl or a trellis because i really want to see these leaves grow large and maybe make it fenestrate i want a cebu blue pothos that is a little bit more mature or fenestrated so instead of buying one maybe i can make this to grow large and fenestrate but we will see and down here is my syndapsis pectus exotica this is the mother plant and from the spring plant video i did have duplicates of this and what i did was combine all those duplicates like i did with the manjula pothos so that i just have one large beautiful plant but it suffered root rot. So I have to re-propagate and rehab everything. But this is essentially is the mother plant and I have a couple more that is downstairs. And right here is a Thermantis 3 star on top of the humidifier. From my spring plant collection video, I also had a humidifier here, but I actually just bought it out again and just plugged it in before I started this video. But I don't really have the humidifier running in my bedroom the entire growing season. I pretty much cut it off when the summer season started. But since I'm starting to use the space heater in my room, even though we haven't turned on our heater yet, I wanted to have the humidifier just in case for the plants. But I was hesitant on having the humidifier running 24 7, 365 because I do have my computer here, my computer here in my bedroom. And I don't think a humidifier is good when you have a computer in your room, at least not good for the computer. And I just recently bought that and I'm still paying for that. So I'm trying to not mess this computer up. And over here, I have my Hoya Crimson Queen. And this one was actually a lot larger earlier this year, but I did prune it a lot because I just wanted to make it smaller. And what I did is I repotted it and just kept the parts that I like. So essentially the parts that has really good variegation, like that one over there and that over here. So I had this for a couple of years now and this year is the first time that I repotted it because Hoyas, at least in my experience, and you will see later on, they don't like getting repotted. And they don't get root bound really fast, so they don't really need to be repotted a lot in the first place so as long as i can keep them in the same pot i try to because even with this one it did go through an adjustment period after i repotted it luckily it is a large enough plant that it bounced back pretty well even though i was losing some leaves or even vines here and there but that's not the case for my hoya plants that are a lot smaller and here in this hanging planter that i received as a gift from one of my friends last christmas is my Syndapsis Tribui Moonlight that I imported from Thailand. So I brought it down so it's not that backlit. But yeah, so this is my Syndapsis Tribui Moonlight that I initially bought from Thailand before Costa Farm started mass producing it. 
and this is the only duplicate plant I believe that I have in this bedroom and it's only a duplicate because I didn't combine it with my synapses pick this trivia moonlight that I got from Costa Farms and let's check out the plants I have above my bed so on the left side is the pearls and shade slash glacier pothos so I've always referred to this as my glacier pothos but as you can see here especially with the new growth it's looking a lot more like pearls and jade pothos so we don't really know with this variety or form of pothos the pearls and jade and joy and glacier look a lot alike and they're often mixed in one plant so for me it doesn't really matter it's kind of cool actually to have all three different kinds of forms of pothos in one plant moving away from that to hello hi to the right side if you hear squeaking i'm standing on the bed as the snow queen slash marble queen pothos i did buy this as a snow queen pothos the variegation was a lot more vibrant when i first bought it but i guess it's not getting enough light so it's looking more like a marble queen pothos but same situation as the pearls and jade glacier pothos that i had i don't really mind i don't really care i like this plant this is one of my favorite pothos plant but since I have this, I took out the Marble Queen Pothos that I previously had in this bedroom and only have this one now, which is technically the Snow Queen Pothos. And let's look at the plants that I have in this corner right next to my desk. This is another south facing window and this I have gone through a lot of different arrangements, but I always have lots of plants in here because this is the most optimal place for me to have plants especially if I'm just relying on natural light and light here is pretty good year round but as you can see I do have a grow light that is not properly installed I just have like a command hook that is not the proper size for it where I hang this Sansi grow light LED again not advisable because it is like leaning on the wall and this one doesn't heat up at least the casing of this doesn't heat up so I'm not worried about it burning the wall or being a fire hazard but generally i don't recommend this and do a proper setup i'm trying to get a lampshade or something that i could put this light on so it's not hanging on the wall like this but up here i have my syngonium confetti this plant is I, i've got this from chicago and i initially actually wasn't too excited about this plant but since since the pink splash syngonium that i got turned out not to be a pink splash syngonium i wanted something that has essentially pink splash on it and i saw this at the plant here and i really liked it but i wasn't too excited about it until it started producing a lot more leaves and i started to really like it especially when it has leaves like this where they're like big sections that are just pink and then you have the green part that is splashed with pink so I really like that about this plant. I almost actually sold this, but once it started pushing out new leaf and I saw how gorgeous the leaves it's producing, I decided to keep it. But you, know, you can also see some leaves that are fully pink. I planted some regular pink syngoniums with it because my goal or intention was not to make the plant grow too big, too fast, keep it into a terrarium size. But as you can see, it's still pushing out leaves that are really large but that's okay so on this side table we have about four plants right here is the synapsis trivia moonlight from the costa farms life trends collection they announced it to be part of their collections back in january but i didn't find this until like months later in lowe's i didn't want to buy it on their website because it costs 50 dollars to buy it from their website and i already had one which the one that i imported from thailand that i showed you earlier and now i see this plant everywhere and right next to that is my syndapsis jade satin that I got from a trade that has now fully grown and actually made a lot of propagations of this one. And if I haven't done that, this plant should be trailing by now, but it hasn't yet, but or it's just almost starting to. And this plant is still uncommon, I believe, but the prices has gone down drastically. So I wouldn't pay too much for this plant, but expect to pay for it a little bit higher than your regular syndapsis plants. Back here is my ficus taniki. This is a wishlist plant that I have that I got from the seal in Chicago. I finally got one. This is also a plant that I have a hard time finding in big box stores. 
or even in local nurseries at least for a good price and a good size but after i bought this from the sale i started seeing it all over us so i guess that's the trend really when you see a plant that you want sometimes it's good to grab it when you see it because you don't know where you're going to see it again but sometimes it's also good to wait especially if you know it's a more common plant because you might find it in another place that's a lot cheaper a lot larger because this one i saw the same time i saw this at costco in a much nicer pot a little bit larger for like ten dollars i mean i only paid like twelve dollars for this one but still it didn't come with its own pot and it was a little bit smaller the other plant here is my hoya carii this is one of the first plants that i have gotten and this one is normally in my kia greenhouse cabinet but it became too large for it and there's no space for it in there anymore and this one i've been trying to grow and not propagate but I don't like it to be laggy. So as you can see, I chopped it off again from the top because it shoot out a very long stem. So yeah, I pruned this one again and hopefully the next leaf it pushes out, it is not from a very long stem. Because I like the leaves to be a lot closer to each other like I have down here. And we're going to talk about my Ruby Ficus Elastica next, but let me pull it out a bit so I can properly show you. So this is my Ruby Ficus Elastica. It has grown so tall. First time I got it, it was three plants in a pot. I sold off the two other plants during the early days of the pandemic. And now it has grown this much. And I also featured this in my video, how to make your ficus plants to branch. And for those who want an update, as you can see here, I showed this in that video, but you can see how much it has grown since. That video and the place where I actually notched it is right over here. As you can see here, a growth point is starting. It's growing a bit slow though, but it is growing and it was successful notching. So I'm very excited about that branch. And with this one, I have it in a corner and you saw I had that grow light hanging. And the previous arrangement of that, I had the grow light pretty much hanging halfway through this plant. And I didn't realize until today when I was watering it that it actually burned the plant. So I'm a bit upset about that. I have to cut this off. So that's why I also kind of moved the light away from this plant. So this won't happen again. And I have to like kind of cut this off. And also right before the growing season ends and to also consolidate space, I repotted a couple of my pothos plants at the base of this Ruby Ficus Elastica. Now, some people don't recommend doing this for some reason, I don't know why, but I did it to save space and so far it's been working out. It's not affecting the Ruby Ficus Elastica negatively or any of the pothos plants negatively. So here I potted the Philodendron Brazil, which I initially thought was a Philodendron cream splash that I got from Green Street Gardens because when I received it, this part over here was like cream color. So I thought it was a cream splash, but likely as you can see now it is a brazil and, and the cream coloring that i initially saw is probably just due to bleaching from the plant receiving a lot of light and since it was grown in a greenhouse it was probably receiving a lot of light when it was shipped to the nursery or before it was shipped to the nursery and right next to it i potted up the emerald pothos as you can see right there and i thought if i planted the emerald pothos underneath here it would lose that variegation but so far it hasn't you can still distinguish the green and green variegation it has on the leaves especially on the newer ones and the last one that i potted up here is the marian pothos or the reverted manjula pothos that also has that green and green variegation like the emerald pothos but this one is a manjula or a reverted manjula instead of a i guess a reverted enjoy pothos but yeah so that is my ruby ficus elastica with some of my pothos plants and above my workstation i have this three plants which are probably one of my favorites or three of my favorites in this room especially aesthetic wise first of course is my hoya crimson queen as you can see it has grown so bushy i mean it was a bushy plant to begin with when i first got it but it has got it a lot bushier especially here at the bottom as you can see the leaves that it has produced and what i love about this is for some reason 
the leaves are facing towards me. Well, I guess I can understand why it's doing that because it is searching for light or it's trying to face towards the light, but I do find that interesting. And over there is my Manjula pothos trailing down, which is one of my favorite plants. This one is still considered rare or uncommon in a lot of places, but I often see this at big box stores, although I rarely see them in big baskets anymore. Usually it's just in like four inch pots. And here is my neon pothos that I originally got from New York. So this one here is my New Yorker. And it also started out as a couple of four inch plants. And this is now a trailing plant like my manjula pothos, like a very long trailing plant. And here is my work desk station. I did a desk setup video if you're interested. And over here, is my 2022 plentiful planner which i'm pretty sure i mentioned somewhere in this video earlier and of course my pothos guidebook just a little bit of shameless plug and this is one of my favorite items right now my starbucks disneyland tumbler i am running out of light and battery so let's hurry this one up so over here i have my full dungeon mikan that's also starting to trail really long my serographica air plant and over here is my philodendron lime, which is pushing out a couple of new leaves that is very peachy red, which I love. And over here is my prop station. This is the Hilton Carter prop station. Okay, so I had to switch cameras because the other one ran out of batteries or sorry if there's any change in quality. But this one, as I was mentioning, is the prop station, the propagation wall stand from Hilton Carter when he released his Target collection. But this one was only available on the website and I got this one for $50 and ever since I've gotten it, this is probably my main way of propagating plants, water propagation. Even in the past, I said water propagation is not really my preferred method, but obviously this is a lot more convenient and a lot more aesthetic. So this is the way that I've been propagating a lot of my plants. And if you follow me on TikTok and Instagram, you've probably seen this in Dapsis propagation which has the album variegation in it it's likely damaged just damaged because this did not come from a album variegated synapsis plant but i just thought it was amazing and i just want to keep a record of it just in case it doesn't happen again and the last section is my ikea greenhouse cabinet i recently done a one-year update so i'm not going to be very detailed on it since i just did a tour of this ikea greenhouse cabinet but let me still do a quick tour of it since I did make changes since I filmed that video. But on top is my Synapsis Silver N. This is my favorite now. Taking over the spot of my Synapsis Argerius, which you will notice is nowhere near in this room. It is downstairs. But here I have my Silvery N and it is trailing so long. And what I love about this Silvery N is the amount of silver it has on its leaves. Like, look at that one. Look at this one. I pretty much have leaves that are all over silver, like this one. And it comes from this, like, one particular vine. The leaves are, like, pretty much super silver. So I really like that. One of my favorites right now. So let's move on to my Kia Greenhouse Cabinet. Even though I recently cleaned it, you can see it's dirty again. But, okay, so quick sweep down so not much change here since my tour i have my monstera elbow the one that i traded the propagation of my thigh constellation with and my silver splash chia pens my tradescania quadricolor poya Curtisia, which has grown so much since i've gotten it my haworthia that looks like an alien egg and this is my Hoya Compacta Variegata. And I said once I've gotten this, I would get rid of my Hoya Compacta Regular, which is right over here. This one is a much larger pot when I got it, but since it's barely surviving in my care, I haven't gotten rid of this one. And I think I'm just gonna keep this one because this one is a lot more finicky plant than I realized. So I decay if this will survive in my care. This is the only one left from the four inch pot that was actually quite full when I first got in it. So we will see. And if this one survives, I think I'm just gonna combine the two together because I think they will look good all in one pot. 
And this one is the only addition to this wire grid, which is the upper pen and pinato. Technically variegata, but as you can see, there's not much variegation on the leaf. So I still kind of want a more mature upper pen and pinato variegata that is more mature and more variegated. And on the second shelf, I have my Discidia variegated, my Philodendron Brazil. And this one, if you've seen my spring plant collection video, barely has any new growth barely any change with that plant so this one it's not doing bad but it's not doing as well and this one is my philodendron kim splash this is the one that i was trying to grow from the single leaf or node along with the upper pen and pinatum variegata this one has become a essentially a plant on its own already and i'm really proud that i was able to grow this from a single leaf and right here is stratosketia gently my syngonium albo cuttings the Shangri-La Pothos, the Syndapsis Silver Hero, the Monstera Siltipicana, and here is my Monstera Stadliana Aurea that I got off a of trade. So this is the one that's different from my IKEA video that I just posted. I put this in Lekka already in my 50th Disney Souvenir Cup. So I actually just did that before I started filming. And here is my Serapegia Woodyi. As I mentioned earlier, this one acts up when it's transitioning to the winter. So I put it in the IKEA greenhouse cabinet. So that's where she is right now. And it's trailing down. And I did hook the trails here because it was already trailing a little bit too long. And this is my Hoya Fishtail propagation, which also got out of its propagation box jail. And this one has grown quite a bit of roots already, so I was confident taking it out. Plus, also, it already started to shoot out new growth, which you can see over here. And while it was in the pot box, it actually has two new leaves, but the other one rotted off. So it was touching the condensation, so it rotted off. So that's also kind of like my signal that it's time to take it off the pot box. And as you can see, it has also started to grow roots uh, behind the original leaves, and it has grown quite a bit of roots down here so I'm really happy that this one propagated so easily and so well and here is my Hoya Caria Albo Marginata this is not the original one that I might still have in the spring plant video I can't remember anymore but my original Hoya Albo Marginata died and this one is a recent purchase from Rewild I think this is the last plant that I bought this year I don't anticipate buying any more plants until the end of the year and this one is a single leaf right now but i asked them would this grow into a plant and they told me yes so and i haven't really repotted it or checked if it has a node because I, i'm just scared because of my experience with the hoya compacta and the hoya kentiana that i also previously bought that died that i repotted and i just don't want this to die out so i'm willing to wait to find out if it actually grow a leaf or become a plant but if not it's fine i like it as a single leaf cutting and here is my hoya carii reverse variegata kind of like with my regular hoya carii i chopped this one off because it started to get leggy and i don't like it leggy and back here is my thirium clarinervium which i also just switched over to leka it was growing in water slash leka kind of it had a lot more water than leka but now it's like properly potted into Leica. And behind that is my Syndapsis Silver Lady that I also took out of the pop box because it was getting too big for it. And it has grown several new leaves. And this one also started out as a couple of single leaf cuttings. And right here is my Peperomia prostata. Like I mentioned in that IKEA video, I do find that some of my Hoyas and Peperomias do like the relative humidity that my IKEA cabinet provides, especially over the winter time. And back there is my Peperomia Hope. And over there, if I could move this one out of the way, is my variegated string of hearts. Let me take it out so you can see it properly. Yeah, so this is my variegated string of hearts. And I love that this one actually held this variegation slower grower than the regular Serapegia string of hearts, but I like it this way. And especially when you have this many plants. When plants are slow growers, I don't mind it anymore. And yeah, that is my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. This holds half of my plant collection in this room. And I haven't done the count yet, but I won't be surprised if I have more plants in this cabinet 
than I have all over my room. And those are the plants in my bedroom slash the updated bedroom tour. And by my final count, I have about 24 plants inside my bedroom, not including the plants I have in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. And as predicted, I do have more plants in the IKEA cabinet than I do in the rest of my bedroom, but not by much. I counted it and I have about 26 plants in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. And compared to my plant collection in spring, I had about 30 plants in my bedroom, not counting the plants I have in my IKEA greenhouse cabinet. And I don't remember on top of my head how many plants I originally had in the cabinet, but since I'm only using three shelves now and I was using four shelves of the IKEA cabinet back then, I'm pretty sure I have more than 26 plants in the IKEA greenhouse cabinet and I used to be able to fit up to 40 plants in the IKEA greenhouse cabinet, so I'm pretty sure it was a lot more than 26. So all in all, I have about 50 plants in my bedroom, which still sounds a lot. And in comparison to the number of plants I had last spring, it doesn't sound like I took out a lot of plants in my bedroom, but to me, it does feel and look like I have took out a lot of plants, especially since I don't have the furnitures that I used to have in this bedroom, like a couple of tables where I put a lot of my plants on. And I also don't have a lot of plants hanging on my wall and on my curtain rods, as you saw earlier. So while the numbers don't reflect a huge difference between the number of plants I had in spring, so now I could actually see and feel it and also see the changes in my plant care routine as well as the stress level when it comes to taking care of my house plants. And as mentioned earlier, I am enjoying my plants again and they are an outlet from stress and not a source of stress for me. However, I still have lots of other plants that are not in my bedroom but are in the rest of the house. So we're gonna go check that out but not in this video because I don't want this video to be way too long. So there's going to be a part two to this where we check out the rest of the plants I have in the house and those are my bigger and larger plants and plants that are normally outside during the growing season that I have brought back in. So let's see if I manage to stay within my goals when I add the rest of the house plants that I have all throughout the house and not just in my bedroom. So stay tuned for that, that is coming up soon and if it's already up, I will link it also up here and also down in the description. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and if you're new here, I hope you subscribe. I come up with houseplants and sustainable lifestyle videos every week and if you haven't yet, check out these videos up here until my next one. But until then, I see you, I appreciate you. Take care of yourself and each other and have a plentiful day. Bye!